Here's another example of being able to find the interval and radius of convergence for a power series. So we have the series n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n, 2x plus 1 to the n, and then square root of n. Um, that square root of n is preventing us from using the root test, unfortunately. So we are going to have to use the ratio test on this. Um, it's a little bit nicer than the previous one, fortunately. Okay, but again, um, everything has to be raised to the nth power for us to be able to use the root test in most cases. Right, so we are going to take the limit as n approaches infinity. Um, we're going to substitute n plus 1 back in. So minus 1 to the n plus 1. And then 2x plus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by the square root of n plus 1. And then we're going to divide that by just the original series or sequence, square root of n or minus 1 to the n. And then 2x plus 1 to the n divided by square root of n. For that to be convergent, it has to be less than 1 okay, by the ratio test. Now, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1, 2x plus 1 to the n plus 1, divided by square root of n plus 1, multiplied by square root of n, minus 1 to the n, 2x plus 1 to the nth power. All right, and that's going to be less than 1. All right, now... What we're going to do at this point is we're going to group like looking factors. Okay, so we're going to have limit as n approaches infinity minus one to the n plus one over minus one to the n because they look alike. Square root of n over square root of n plus one because radicals look alike. And then 2x plus one to the n plus one divided by 2x plus one to the n less than one, right? Um, and now we can simplify each of those expressions, okay? So notice that we have minus one to the n plus one. So we could break off one of those. Um, and we could just notice that if we cancel those out, we would be left with just one of those n minus ones, okay? So this is gonna be limit as n approaches infinity of minus one, okay? So, cause there's one more in the numerator the denominator. Very similar to that, we're going to get rid of all of n of the 2x plus 1s, and we're going to be left with a 1 of those. Okay, so that's going to be times 2x plus 1, right? Nothing we could really do yet with this factor except make it into one single radical. Okay, so just move them both under the same radical because they are both the same index, which is a square root. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and just evaluate the limit. And I'm going to find the limit as n approaches infinity of, and I'm going to divide everything by n since it's the highest power in the denominator. All right, so we've done this lots of times. That's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. Clearly, when we apply the limit, that's going to go to 0. So we have the square root of 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. Okay, So this whole expression just becomes 1 when we evaluate the limit. And now, when we take the absolute value of negative 1, that goes away, All right, because we're doing an absolute value. Um, and we're left with 1 times 2x plus 1 is less than 1. All right, now to find the radius of convergence, the coefficient of x has to be one. Okay, so that's the trick when we're doing this, okay, to find the radius of convergence, all right? It's not that difficult to do that, all right? Um, so if you ever have a coefficient other than one for the x, what you're gonna do is you're gonna factor that out, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite this as the absolute value of two, and when we factor a two out from this binomial, it becomes x plus one half, okay, less than one, All right? So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, if you don't trust what I did there, just foil it back out, okay? So if you foil it back out, you will get back to the two x plus one, 
All right. So now what we can do is we can just go ahead and rewrite this as two absolute values of x plus a half less than one. And then we can divide by two. All right. So that's going to be x plus a half is less than one half. All right. That's still absolute value. All right. And this is going to be the radius of convergence. Okay. So again, the coefficient of x has to be one for us to be able to find the radius of convergence. Okay. So let's just hold on to that, that r is going to be a half. And that means that that's the distance in either direction that the series is going to be converging for pi. Right. Now, we still have to go through and find the interval of convergence. And what we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite the um, absolute value inequality as a compound inequality. So that's going to be minus one half of x plus a half less than positive one half. And then to solve this, I'm just going to subtract one half. And we end up with negative one less than x less than zero. Now, this is the preliminary uh, interval of convergence. But remember, we have to check the endpoints to see if we have convergence or divergence. Okay, so we're going to have to check the endpoints. And the good news is for this one, we're going to see something that we haven't seen before. One of the endpoints is going to converge. Okay, so remember, what we do is we just plug both of these back into the original series. Okay, so. So I'm going to plug negative one back in for x and zero back in for x. So when x is equal to negative one, the series now becomes n equals one to infinity. The denominator was the square root of n, right? Let me make this a little smaller, right? Um, and we have minus one to the n, two times negative one plus one to the nth power. Now, if we simplify this expression, this is just going to be minus one to the n. Okay, so we have series n equals one to infinity, minus one to the n, times minus one to the n over the square root of n. Okay. Um, remember the trick that if we have the same powers, we just multiply those together, um, what's inside there. And so we end up with the series n equals one to infinity of one to the n divided by square root of n, one to the n, no matter what power we want to raise one to, it's gonna be one. And so we end up with n equals one to infinity of one. And I'm just gonna rewrite that as n to the one half power. All right, so again, one to the n for any power of n is gonna be equal to one. All right, so that's why we can write it as this. All right, so now we need to determine whether this series converges or diverges, all right? There's a number of ways that we could do that, okay? Um, probably the easiest way is to notice that it's a P-series, okay? So this is a P-series where P is equal to a half, which is clearly less than or equal to one, okay? And remember, if P is less than or equal to one, that means that it is going to diverge. Okay, so this diverges at the point when x is negative one. Okay, so we're gonna hold on to that because we're gonna need that to write the final answer. Now let's let x equal zero, all right? This was a little bit tougher, but it's not that big, okay? So we're gonna substitute zero back in. So we get n equals one to infinity minus one to the n, two times zero plus one to the n. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of n. Okay. This now becomes the series n equals one to infinity minus one to the n, one to the n, because two times zero is going to be zero, and then square root of n. All right, remember that minus one to the n is going to be equal to one for all real numbers of n, all right? And so what we end up with is n equals one to infinity of minus one to the n over n to the one half power. All right, this is not a P series, okay? It's close to a P series, but it's not. It's actually an alternating series, okay? And clearly we can see the alternating factor here, okay? So this is an alternating series. 
And remember, there's two conditions that we have to check. So uh, we're going to take the absolute value and our a sub k is going to be equal to one over n to the one half or k to the one half, excuse me, because we're changing the variable. And what we have to do is we have to determine, first of all, does it look like that the terms are decreasing? And then secondly, we take the limit as it goes towards infinity for the sequence. All right, so part one. So we have n is one, two, three, and four. All right, so, um, and remember, we have one over k to the one half. All right, so this is going to be one over one to the one half, which is one. We have one over two to the one half, which is one over root two, which is going to be, I believe, 707. All right, and of course, if you don't trust me, um, you could just use a calculator for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the square root of two, the two square root, and then I'm going to take the reciprocal. So that's 0.707. I'm going to do the same thing with three. All right, so I'm going to take the square root of three, square root, and I'm going to take the reciprocal of that, and that's going to be 0.577. Okay, so one over three to the one half is going to be approximately 0.577. And then if I use four, one over four to the one half, that's a half. All right. So notice that it looks like that the terms are, or the terms of the sequence are decreasing. All right. And that makes sense because as the number k increases, we're going to keep getting a, a number closer and closer to zero. All right. Now, secondly, we need to take the limit as k approaches infinity of one over k to the one half, and that equals zero. All right, so we finally get that we have convergence. So we have converges at x equals negative one. Okay, or I'm sorry, x equals zero. We just checked non-negative one in the previous. Okay, so we have a convergence at x equals zero. All right, so here's how we write our interval. Okay, so the interval is going to be exclusive of negative one, but inclusive of zero, okay? So remember, if it diverges, you're just gonna use the open parenthesis, and then if it converges, you're gonna use the bracket. And then remember earlier, the radius of convergence was r equals a half, all right? So those are our radius and intervals of convergence for this one. Okay, so a little bit different than before, because we finally got an endpoint that was converging.